How's it going, all you jerks and jerkettes? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing and joining me for Brain Smashers, blasphemous uh, belly butt barf and her birthday party. Uh, we're listening to. Uh, I'm so happy to fucking have this. This is a circle of Ouroboros split with crooked necks. We're listening to the crooked necks half. Uh, right now, this is kind of like a... A lot of people call it black gaze, uh, and it's not that far off the bat. It's definitely super post-rock influenced black metal a little bit. Uh, I just fucking love it. It's so like emotional, and it's, it's kind of emo, I guess, now that I think about it. Uh, but I got that CDM last night, uh, it's limited to 500 copies on Cocaine Copia, and it was kind of hard to track down, a lot of distros had it, but they were up in the, like, 15 to $18 range, and I found it in, uh, like, Germany or something for, like, four bucks, uh, and so I got that, and this, since I was already paying for shipping, this is Svartrit's, uh, three album. Now this came out on Avant Garde, they licensed it from Ancient Productions. This is yet another brilliant fucking band from the guy from Beckett Neximo. Uh, so those are two new ones. Uh, what we're doing today, I see you guys talking a lot about cassettes. And I keep going like, man, I don't really care about cassettes, but I bet those guys would love to see some of my stuff. I've got a couple of gems, uh, but I just keep them in a box, you know, filed away. But um, I thought I'd bring them out and show you what I've got for a quick video about cassettes. I think I might just end up doing like two of them. So this will be one of two, two of two, maybe three. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll just get started on this one. Uh, Immortals Diabolical Full Moon Mysticism. This is their first album. And by the way, I've got a sealed copy of it and an unsealed copy of it. I am a huge collector of the first four Immortal records. Um, and I found these, the reason I have two of them, I found these in a fucking grocery store in a bin next to the fucking laundry detergent for like 50 cents a piece. Uh, so who knows how they fucking wound up there, but I also picked up Sarcophago, uh, like Impaled Nazarene, and a bunch of other stuff that was on JL America. Uh, so I thought that was so fucking funny that I, I bought this at a goddamn high V drugstore right next to the laundry detergent. So, so nothing special about the packaging as you would expect with JL America, but you know, killer fucking album. I'm really happy to have it uh, in my Immortal collection. Speaking of Immortal, so this is Dead Hedenska Folk. This is a Norwegian band and a bath from uh, Immortal played drums on this famously between doing, I think it was between the Pure Holocaust and Battles in the North era. So this is just a uh, folky black metal. It's maybe a little bit more on the nasty side. Uh, handwritten two and one on here. Um, photocopied insert. I got this on eBay, I don't know, 15 years ago or so. And it's pretty good stuff. This was re-released on uh, <laughs> Didn't realize that was blank until I found myself showed it to you. It was released on a 10 inch a couple of years ago by some label, uh, but it's pretty good stuff. Kind of a collector's items. Like I said, I collect early immortal stuff, so that's definitely the reason I got that. I want to say, didn't this guy, I want to say this was like a bath, and then the guy that went on to do Wardruna, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong on that. Another demo, this is a band called Frozen Shadows from Canada. Um, I, this demo is really rough, I guess I would say, really amateurish, but they wound up doing some really fucking killer albums. Uh, their last album, Hanty Says, was amazing. Uh, this is a Quebecois black metal band. This is really DIY, so it's like hand glued together two pieces of paper. Boy, I haven't opened these in a long time. But this came out in uh, 96, I want to say. And this has since been remastered and reissued on CD, and I do have that. Um, but if you're at all interested in this band, Frozen Shadows, their last two albums fucking rule. Uh, I got this out of the back of a Red Stream catalog back in like 98 or so. Um, what I'll, all I remember about this tape is like, the drummer uses the same fucking fill every single time he fills on this song, on this album, it's so funny. Uh, got another demo, I guess. This is the Black, uh, also now known as, er, sorry, Black Dawn, now known as the True Black Dawn. They just put out a killer record. Um, so this is their 
album. This is a demo from '93, I think. It's called "War Against Christians." And just a black cassette uh, printed on one side, so it's finished black metal. Um, this definitely shows them being more of a death metal band. <laughs> so it's blank on the inside here. There's the booklet. Got a weird band photo. You don't see stuff like this that's just super black that often. Uh, but after this demo, they went on to do Kill for Satan. Fucking amazing black metal album on uh, Necropolis. You should all hear that. Uh, but this isn't much to write home about. It's just kind of weird that I have this uh, old demo. I got it on eBay, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, I misspoke and said the black because here I have the demo of the black featuring John Notefight from Dissection. Um, I guess I could question whether or not this is authentic. Um, the, the first, I guess, clue being that it could not be authentic is that I only paid like $16 or so for this on eBay probably 10 years ago or so, but fuck, the black is amazing. Um, this demo was reissued on CD by Necropolis uh, as the self-titled album. It's got some crap in there. Uh, but the self-titled album did not have the intros that this uh, does. And as you can see, this is hand number 39 out of 666. And there's a picture of Notevite, or known as Riatus, on here. Uh, but this, I would say this is probably, I think, the coolest thing in my uh, tape collection. Uh, but yeah, that's the Black Killer fucking band. Next, this is a band everybody goes fucking nuts about. This is Blasphemy's Fallen Angel of Doom. Uh, this is the Wild Rags version. And I want to say I found this like at a garage sale or something. Uh, maybe it was like a pawn shop or some shit. Uh, but since I collect Wild Rags, and it was blasphemy, I thought I'd better get it. I've had this in my collection for probably 10-15 years now. It's kind of in rough shape. Uh, it spent some time in my car, in the back seat. Uh, God, I really want to make a joke there, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> uh, so yeah, a lot of people will go nuts for this. I think it goes for about 50-75 bucks on eBay. Um, and like I said, I'm not a huge fan of this of this band. Um, it, people have really burned me out on them for a, a while now, but I think I'm gonna hang on to it. If someone were to offer me maybe like 150 bucks, I'd probably take it, but it would not be worth it. Uh, moving on, another JL America release. This is Asheron's Night Rites of the Black Mass. Print a cassette, <clears throat> real simplistic. This is just fucking killer. Stripped down, old school death metal. I love the band photo there. <laughs> and since it's JL America, the packaging is real minimal, real thin, cheap, shitty. Uh, I don't know what it was about that label, but they've just got really good European releases and we're like, we're putting as little money into these as fucking possible. Yeah, so that's Asheron's Rights of the Black Mass. Killer fucking album. This Coming up next, Darvulia, a French little uh, alliance de vermins. I, I can never, there's Mysticism, Macabre is the other album that I like, but this one, I can never think of what it's called. I just think of it as this album, or Candle Fuck You, I don't know. Anyway, I bought this from a distro in Chicago a couple of years ago at a show where Mar from Norway was playing with uh, Niantil and Chete and Maleficez, I think, played. Got a lot of cool bands played that show. I was surprised how many people uh, didn't show up for that. Uh, this came out on Battle Skurs Productions, and this album fucking rules. Uh, if you listened to the last two tracks from my old band Satan's Almighty Penis, you would hear that this heavily influenced those songs, uh, big time. I, I, I didn't realize it out at the time. I don't think how much of an influence that band was. But going back and listening to those songs, I'm just like, fuck. That was like a straight up Darvulia ripoff with a little bit different uh, vocals and drumming. 
Uh, but anyways, <clears throat> so this is Abyssic Hate's Suicidal Emotions. Um, this album kind of, I think some people consider it a classic, like a staple that everybody needs to know about, but then sometimes I feel like I don't see it as often as it deserves to be spoken about. Um, this version, <clears throat> this is actually a new re new acquisition, so I don't know much about it. The album or the label is Old Legend Productions, I guess. Uh, but killer, I don't know, suicidal black metal band album, I guess. Uh, this is the only material from this band that I that I think sounds like suicidal black metal. Uh, but yeah, it came out in 2001 originally. I want to say. Pretty good looking cassette there, um, gold print on it. Uh, but yeah, just kind of like uh, self-harm black metal, I guess. I don't know, it's probably just based on the album cover. But uh, yeah, it's a really good record. I'm happy to have it on cassette. It was given to me by a dear friend. You know who you are, thank you, you're watching. Um, but yeah, that's a couple of cassettes. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know anything that's on your mind. We're heading into the weekend. I hope you guys have a killer fucking weekend. Listen to some metal, watch some old videos, have a beer, get outside, uh, do whatever you do. Enjoy your fucking life. <laughs> See you later.